Somebody asked, can you explain who Atum is? Atum? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, in the creation story, if you speak to different people about how did we come about to be on this planet, you will get different religions will give you an, an account. And most of it comes from Abrahamic religions where they say, there's a character called God that created everything in six days. He said, let there be light, let there be this, and he did everything in six days. That's only 6,000 years old. So if you go to like civilizations or cultures that were older, they have a different account. So if you were to go back as far as you can go, you end up in ancient Egypt, right? And in the Egyptian story, they will tell you that Atum, yeah, that's where life started from, yeah? Now, the thing is that Atum is, so there's a symbolic story, but it ties into how nature works and how the universe works. So Atum was a being that when you look at the story of Egypt, they say that he came out of the primordial waters and he took himself in hand symbolically and he, he basically germinated life on the planet. And so, but if you look at that story, it explains atoms. So that's why the word atom ties into the word atoms, because how atoms start and how they came from an explosion, and then the, what they term the Big Bang, and then that expo explosion, life started to form from. We had like, the single cell organisms, you had the like, algae and protozoa and the amoebas, and then life germinated and came out of the water. So it's the same story you have Anun, which is the water, representative of the water. Atum came out of Anun, mm. yeah? And then as Atum grows, yeah, you have the three positions of the sun, where you have Atum, then it goes to the middle point, which is Atun, then it goes down. Atum is referred to as the undifferentiated one, yeah? Then you go to Atun, which is like the middle where the sun is, uh, is Zenith. Then you go down where they say Amun, and then it goes back into the water. And Amun is referred to as the hidden one. But when you look at that cycle, and all of them belong to a, an order called Ray, and Ray represents the sun, as I was saying before, because you needed the water, the Nun, which is Anun, and then you need the sun, and obviously the water and the sun and the soil. So it shows you the motion of the sun. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Atum is a being, is a, a, a being that belongs to an order called Ray or a triad being, which is Atum, Atun and Ray. Sorry, Atun, Atum, Atun and Amun, who yeah. all belong to the order of Ray and Ray is the sun, as I said, um, and stars are suns as well. So it all kind of ties into how life evolved to come out, come out here. But um, yeah, he's also a person. Yeah. When you say a person, um... he had parents, like just like you and me. All, all the, that's what I'm saying. That the Egyptian mysteries or the stories, yeah. even though they relate to like things in nature, they were actually people. So, like we say Ra, or yeah. we say Ra is the sun, but there was a person who was called Ra. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like because we basically anthropomorphized. Yeah, so that basically means that um, we, we, we came out of the waters and we grew onto land and then we kind of evolved. And that same story got grafted into religion, but they then turned it into this character called God. That, do you know what I mean? Then the Mary and they bring Jesus into it as the son. Let's look at how it ties in. The son of God. But that's the S-O-N. But we know that's referring to the S-U-N which is the sun, you see. So they just basically took those Egyptian stories and then kind of evolved them into stories that don't make sense. And listen to this as well, like the woman, a lot of the times in the religious story, you don't even hear about them. When you go through the genealogy of the people in the Bible, it's mm -hmm. all men, 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 men. They don't really tell you about the women. They will say, like someone took a wife, yeah? Like Seth took a wife or like, Abraham's wife, but you don't hear about Abraham's wife's family or like where, where the, or the women, most of the women, they don't even, they don't even mention, they just like, they just popped up. 
And the reason they don't tell you is because the names, their names will give you the answer to where they got it from. So they change names with what I'm saying in taking the Egyptian stories and mysteries. Like, for example, Abraham, yeah, he, his name was Abram, and then he became Ibrim, and then it was Abram, then he became Abraham. The same with Sarah or Saria, it became Sarah. And the reason they don't really give you the names is because the name would tell you where they come from. Like Abraham was a Chaldean, you see? And um, we know about his father, Terah, they were from that kind of like Mesopotamia, um, an area called Shinar, which people say Sumer, you see what I mean? So I'm basically telling you that real people that walked the earth had children. Um, and another thing, Jesus, for example, I brought this to show you, like we have this book here called The Death, Life, Wife and Children of Jesus Christ. Yeah, because a lot of people feel like Jesus never had any children or never had any wives. And, and that's through the whole Catholic thing. And they try to promote this, like, be a man that never has a woman kind of thing. But we know that's not what Jesus did. So, so who are they living to? Yeah. Where, where's kind of like the proof that Jesus had wives and uh, children? Good question. <clears throat> so how you know this is because they say that he was a Jew, right? Mm. In Judaic law, only certain things can happen like a woman only a woman you're married to can do certain things like when Mary Magdalene was oiling his feet or washing him and asking about him and like the wedding in Cana that was his wedding because if you read that story carefully it's like everyone was coming to him about the wine is running out what's going on with this was like why is everyone going to him but like I said if you study Judaic law only your wife can do certain things to you and like I said, you can um, read that scroll and it gives you the whole like breakdown of their children and everything. And even down, like that was kept as a secret. And um, the Knights Templar, yeah, they were like kind of like keeping that secret and protecting him. And they show you this in um, the movie called uh, The Da Vinci Code. Yeah, so these are a few things you can look at to see that. Yeah, I mean, Jesus was married and he had children.